Today I'm gonna to walk through putting this Athena 421 together. That's a 58 millimeter stroke on a 115 rod with a 68 millimeter bore. These are the Athena cylinders. They're fully drag ported. They don't look all shiny and everything because uh, we had to put new nickel on them. And that means they have to go through a whole process of stripping that liner out and putting the new liner in and then honing it to size. And it's a whole foundry process that blasts these things. So all the shiny stuff goes away, but that doesn't take away from the porting. This thing will move out. It's going to be a race gas setup with a drag port. So it's going to move out fairly well. Now I'm going to start with these cases. They're completely bare because I blasted them. They are glass blasted. So they look brand new again. I also glass blasted the Athena cylinder. So uh, the finish would match. Now I'm going to get started on putting every little thing back in. The only thing that is not put in are the, uh, the plugs for the rods that hold the shift fork. These plugs are already in. They just pop in and out. You can tap them in or out with a punch. Um, you put a little silicone on them when you tap them in to hold them in place. Um, I've already installed the oil plug also oil plug with the copper washer but everything else is going to be bolted back on let's do it step by step even the little things like the plugs that go in the side water jackets here the stock cylinders have them too so do the wampus style we'll put a little three bond on it they usually have copper washers, but you guys know if you've been watching my videos that I substitute three bond for copper washers often. Easier to work with. I also have to put the water plugs in these. New water plugs. We'll set this aside to dry. We'll do this oil catch and channel that sits right above the main shaft transmission bearing. Loctite everything. Excuse my tooling, but this snapped off and I just, I just haven't picked up a new one yet. Still working, as long as it'll stay connected. Okay, you can see how this channels the oil down to this bearing, which is the main shaft, front shaft of the transmission. 
that's all that does. Motor would probably survive fine without it because the oil is always sloshing around in here anyway, but that's the channel and that's what it does. Dowel pins in that align the cases up. Those are very important. Don't forget those. Now, let's start on uh, putting the transmission in. Get out all the head studs put aside. These will go in the 421 cylinder. So first, let's put the cap on here. This just has an O-ring. And a lot of times you'll see these fingers crack here. And this one's starting. But um, that doesn't make this uh, not work or anything. All you're doing is holding this O-ring in. So as long as the ear is there, it can have a crack. And uh, you don't have to replace it. Um, if you want to, no harm, no foul. But that's all it does. It's an O-ring that holds the oil in the case. These are keyed, I shouldn't say keyed, but offset so the screws only line up one way. So get them all aligned, the holes all aligned. And then again, a little Loctite. And since we bead blasted everything, uh, the holes had to all be cleaned up and you normally you just pressure wash them and they'll clean them out. Sometimes you have to run uh, a thread tap through them just to clean them up. You see how that fits in there real nice. The drum is next. Take the drum. We rounded the shift star off on it. Part of the Pro Mod package. We will put a little Loctite on it. Shift drum. Dowel pin, washer that holds that dowel pin in, and Loctite on the screw so nothing backs off. This just slides right in. We won't put the locking collar on it until we get the front shift fork and shaft in. You put the fork in line with the center groove. Doesn't matter where the drum is at the time, you can spin it around. Just kind of soft assembling everything. The longer shaft with the two shift forks on the other side. One is larger, which goes towards the sprocket side. They are numbered one and two. So you got two number ones that are same size and one number two that is a little bit larger. Line it up with the first groove in the drum. And you know, if you're having any issues, you can always spin the drum to get it where it lines up a little easier. Nothing is in yet. Nothing solidly in, it's just all loose. So it slides around. Okay, I'm going to put the little locking clips in on the far side, on the sprocket side.
You can do this a number of ways. I usually do it with a screwdriver, but since I got a pair of fat pliers here, which are the hardest to do, needle nose would work easier, flat blade screwdriver. You just got to get them inserted. There. Now we'll push them all the way in. This holds the front shaft in and also holds the drum in. It's got two jobs. The rear one's held in by the shift shaft, the centric, and um, we'll see if this is uh, right to be used again. We'll have to get the shift shaft and everything and uh, see how much wear is on this. All right, and that's still usable. We got the dowel centered, top and bottom. You always want to try to leave as much room on top of the fork as possible because when they wear the fork sags and rests its tooth on the top dowel pin. So always lift it up as high as you can off that dowel pin. Bend the locking washer over. And let's get the arm in there and spring. Now this one can be a little tricky sometimes. Again, use Loctite. And we gotta get that centered. In here and on the correct side of this spring. Again, it can be a little tricky. Get that spring to sit down inside there. There we go. Square this up so the shoulder drops inside the bolt and then tighten her down. All right, I think everything's done here. Let's get these seals in. I oiled them all up. Remember, all the seals push in by your thumb. Remember, all seals except for the water pump seal push in by hand. It's a little more difficult today because I've got some gnarled up digits. <laughs> I did that by rubbing old tire weight glue off the inside of my rim. Have you been watching my super stock videos? You might get a laugh out of those. And me trying to rub the glue off the inside of the rim. Ugh. What a pain trying to get that tire rim combo hook to go down the track right. It's the same no matter if it's a quad, a motorcycle, or a car. You're doing the same thing, trying to go fast down a track. 
Let's get the bearings on the end of these. Remember this bearing, this side always goes out. This is the front transmission. Sealed side out. Now, these bearings are different in size, so don't get them confused. Sometimes they're both keyed. This one is a bit smaller than the idle gear that goes on the other shaft. So this will just sit down in here like so. This one is keyed here, but we'll have to put it all together first, like that. And big outside bearing here, outside bearing. This clip goes on the inside. Now, this clip is on the outside. I gotta stack this correctly. Washer first, then idle kick gear. Little D type washer that's keyed. And then your clip. get the rest of these seals put in, but let's get all the half moon clips put in. There's three of them. One for the front crank, just on one side. Small one for the idle kick gear bearing front. And the other main bearing over here on the opposite side has one also. There we go. These just drop in. You just have to align the sliders up with the shift forks. Get the bearings and the keys. Make sure everything spins freely. Crank, line up the key on the one side, and that's it. There you go. Now, this seal always looks like it goes on backwards. It's got a little rib that lines up in the case. This seal, the same thing, backwards, this side out. Rib lines up. With Get the rest of these seals on. Make sure the springs don't pop out of the back as you put them on. Oh, gotta have the one piece I forgot on this side. There we go. Top case needs its piece. And then all that's left is the water pump and the kicker seal. I always get this semi set up before I put the cases together. 